Hi there, it's Pastor Greg sharing another thought with you today on transforming the world. This week we're examining the characteristic of reverence, to have deep respect for someone or something. So I, I, I sort of hinted at this yesterday. Where, where did the idea of reverence toward God come from? Where did this whole idea of showing reverence toward God come from? Let's talk about that today. Uh, I'll be back in just a moment. So, when Moses first encountered God, I talked about him and Aaron yesterday, but in Moses' first encounter with God, there was something significant that happened here. Um, that's, that's that whole burning bush encounter that Moses had and, uh, in Exodus chapter 3. And when, when Moses drew near to that burning bush, God looks at him and says, take off your sandals, you're standing on holy ground, Exodus 3.5. So God introduced himself to Moses as a holy God, that he, God, is pure and undefiled. So the idea of reverence for God started with God. In the Old Testament, God taught the Israelites how to show proper reverence. He gave them hundreds of laws relating to purity and holiness and worship. Deuteronomy 5 is a good example. Sinful humanity, and let's face it, the people of Israel indeed were sinful. Although God chose them out of the world, they were still people plagued by sin. Just, just like you and I, we're still plagued by sin. But God spelled out a couple laws, <laughs> several hundred laws, and most of it related to this idea that if you're going to be my people, you need to be, you need to be holy just as I am holy. So God's trying to transfer his holiness to his people who would be known by his name. His presence dwelt with Israel in this little chest, this sacred chest they used to carry around with them. That was the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, they were not allowed to touch it as a matter of reverence to God. God's pretty clear there. Most people weren't even allowed to look at it, let alone touch it. Uh, the Holy of Holies inside this tabernacle that I was talking about, that's where the Ark of the Covenant resided. Uh, it was secure behind this uh, very thick curtain. And no one, for the most part, nobody was allowed behind that curtain. Uh, and, and only the high priest was allowed behind that curtain once a year. Only after that, that high priest had... Uh, gone through a ritual to purify himself. You went behind that curtain disrespectfully, uh, you were struck down because God says, look, I'm holy. I cannot tolerate your sin in my presence. So um, <laughs> the purpose of these rules, these strict rules, was to define holiness and to impress upon uh, not just the Israelites, but all of humanity, to impress upon humanity the necessity for reverence in the presence of the Lord. God is not to be trifled with. Okay, I get it. I get it. Our God is a holy God. Um, there is no one like him. But question number five, I want you to look at question number five here in the self-evaluation section. It sort of turns things around a little bit. Um, maybe you're wondering why it asks this question do I desire to be holy as God is holy you know, God establishes the fact he says look I am a holy God you, you and your sinfulness dare not be in my presence period and God actually took great measures to preserve his holiness by creating a barrier between ourselves and him but question number five implies that we too can become holy, or in other words, set apart and different from the world. Well, for those who understand who God is, they have a healthy fear of God, a, a healthy reverence. Some of your Bibles will say fear the Lord, but that's 
it's not be afraid of the Lord, but have a reverence for the Lord. It's a good thing. It really is. It's important that we hold God in reverence because it affects the way that we worship. See question three, for example. So how does our holiness connect with our reverence toward God? Well, to have reverence for God is to also recognize this, his authority. And we when, when we recognize his authority, we should naturally desire to obey his laws. And his laws have an awful lot to say about our personal conduct, our personal holiness. I mean, were you able to make the, follow me there? When you and I have reverence for God, we also recognize his authority. And when we recognize God's authority in our lives, we should naturally desire to obey his laws, what he has commanded. And his commands guide us into holiness. Reverence from God should naturally lead to a desire to live in a way that honors God. Our life of obedience to God's commands is a demonstration of our reverence. The way that we worship, the way that we love, the way that we speak, the way that we serve. All of these acts of holiness are ultimately a demonstration of our reverence for God. And I especially like question number seven. Does my choice of slang, do, does my choice of slang expressions demonstrate that I have a holy awe of God? That's a pretty good question. And I think the point here is that saying things like, oh my God, or, or any other kind of verbiage like that, it, it tends to treat God as ordinary. And it should not have a place in a Christian's vocabulary. It, it's just not God honoring. And so, yeah, um, we, we should be striving to be holy. We should be striving to be set apart and different from the world. It's uh, it's an impossible task on our own. Thank, thank the Lord that we have Christ to help us with that and the Holy Spirit to guide us along those ways. But our reverence for God, the fact that we recognize we are in all of God, we have deep respect for God, it should drive us to have a desire to live in a way that honors him. And if we choose to live in a way that honors him, we will naturally uh, naturally drift toward a more holy way of living, affecting what we do, affecting where we go, affecting what we watch, what we read, and even what we say. Let's continue to examine this topic tomorrow. There's a whole lot more to be talking about when it comes to this personal holiness and reverence thing, and we'll pick it up tomorrow where we left off. My name is Pastor Greg, and you've been watching Transforming the World.